As road vehicles became more and more of a dominant presence, there have been many attempts to adapt them for use on railways or rebuild them into rail vehicles. Not all of these attempts have been successful, but for the most part, it's fairly easy to make a car work on a railway. This raises the question then, if it's easy to make a road vehicle work on a railway, how hard can it be to make a rail vehicle work on the road? The answer, as it turns out, is very. For the most part, there's no real point in modifying a rail locomotive to drive along the road. Not only because they're extremely heavy, but roads are designed for small individual vehicles. Locomotives are designed to pull massive amounts of cargo all in one go, meaning that all their extra power would be wasted pulling only a few trailers at a time on roads that can't support their weight. So what possible use could a railway locomotive have on a road? Well, power. The way most modern diesel electric engines work is that rather than having the engine power a transmission which drives the wheels like a car, their engines instead power an alternator which generates electricity. This electricity is then fed to motors connecting to the locomotive's wheels which allows it to move. Because trains are so heavy, freight trains especially, these locomotives need to generate a lot of power to start and move such massive loads. As such, most diesel electric freight engines are essentially mini power stations on wheels. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. In 1998, a town in Quebec used a single M420W locomotive to power their town hall, police station, and multiple municipal buildings after an ice storm took out their power grid. While it wasn't exactly powering the whole town, the fact that one locomotive can consistently generate enough energy to give hundreds, if not thousands of people heat and light is very impressive, and possibly something some engineers tried to capitalize on. In 1997, the Russian Ministry of Defense contacted the 21st Research Institute and the Bauman Moscow State Technical University looking to develop a project. There's not much information on what the original pitch was, but supposedly the project involved experimenting with and developing a heavy-duty military vehicle that had all-wheel steering and all-wheel drive with multiple axles. A few years prior, a machine had been produced with electro-hydraulic drive on all wheels on hydropneumatic suspension, so this new project was likely a continuation of that. Under the codename Balsamin, work on the project began. The frames of this new machine were taken from a Maz 547 missile carrier and modified, with each wheel capable of being steered independently and having its own electric motor. To power these wheels, an M62 freight locomotive was acquired, and rather than take the engine out or strip the locomotive for parts, the team just took it off its bogies and mounted it on the modified Maz frame. Why they chose to use the entire locomotive rather than just its engine and alternator is unknown. But with a 14D40 two-stroke 150-litre V12 engine capable of producing 2,000 horsepower, it's fair to say it was probably more than enough to generate the electricity needed to drive the wheels, if a little excessive. Other modifications included fitting battery boxes to the sides and converting the rear cab into an extra fuel tank. Why the government funded the project and what they intended with it is still pretty much unknown. Like I said, part of the project is the arise to do with testing a new suspension and driving method for army vehicles, but the choice to use an M62 locomotive to make up the bulk of the machine has led many to believe that it was intended to be used as a mobile power station for off-grid or remote areas. Given how much energy the engine can produce, that theory makes sense since the amount it generated compared to how much the wheels needed was quite excessive, but then again, this is all just speculation. By 2002, the project was completed. It was taken to a testing site where it would be put through its paces, only for it to move a few meters under its own power before its third axle failed and fourth wheel broke away completely. Here is where we start to see the flaws in using railway locomotives on the roads. Firstly is weight. The M62s in total weigh 116 tons. With their bogies removed, their bodies weigh about 86 tons. On a railway, only a tiny amount of a locomotive's wheels touches the rails at any given time. 
and so a locomotive needs that extra weight to help them with adhesion. Given that the average modern SUV weighs between 1 to 2 tons, and heck, even an M1 Abrams weighs between 60 and 70 tons, even with 12 wheels and off-road suspension, a locomotive's weight is well in excess of many bridges and highways, and off-road, 86 tons of steel isn't exactly easy to pull out of the mud. There's a reason why railway tracks are made out of solid metal, held together with sleepers, and heavily reinforced. Secondly is practicality. When cars or other road vehicles are converted into rail vehicles, the procedure is relatively straightforward. Usually it involves simply swapping out the wheels, reinforcing the frames, and adding couplings. I'm oversimplifying a bit, but those are the broad strokes. Rail vehicles, however, require significant and complex modifications in order to run without rails, such as fitting a steering system, transmission, and brakes strong enough to stop such a heavy machine safely, on top of wheels strong enough to support and evenly distribute said weight. And finally, it's just simply overkill. Cars don't really need much power to get going, as the only thing the engine needs to move is just the car on its own. A locomotive, on the other hand, needs as much power as it can get because it also has to move freight trucks and passenger carriages as well as itself. Their engines then are naturally much more powerful than those of cars, but given how little power is needed for a car to move, a locomotive's engine is massively overkill for such a simple job. To put it into perspective, the engine in a Volvo XC60 can output between 115 to 214 horsepower. Meanwhile, the engine in an M62 diesel produces an average of 1,974 horsepower. Even something as plucky as a Class 08 shunter produces between 350 to 400 horsepower. Using a locomotive engine to run a road vehicle would be like trying to modify a jet fighter into a crop duster. They're just in completely different leagues. After the M62 Mobile's failure, funding for the project was quickly axed. Despite its abysmal performance, the machine was preserved and put on display at Kolomna Locomotive Works Plant 38. However, nobody's really seen it since the plant was partially liquidated in 2011, and so whether it's still in one piece is somewhat of a mystery. Modifying a railway locomotive for road use is a novel idea. On paper, a big engine and a lot of wheels should make a powerful machine, but some things just aren't designed to be adaptable. Stay in your lane feels a little reductive to say, so perhaps remember instead that for some of us, there are environments in which we struggle, but you don't need to exceed everywhere to be great. Sometimes sticking to what you're good at is enough. Subscribe for more.